So now I have two of these Panasonic G7. I'm just gonna be reviewing one and the other one right here is just for show. Number one is the build quality. If you buy this, you won't get any magnesium alloy in here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the only metal here is actually the connector between the lens and the center itself, this outside one. This plastic, plastic. This plastic is no joke. I would say it's a polycarbonate, just like the DSLRs in the market today. This one is still robust. And now moving on to number two is the autofocus. It's not that great when it comes to autofocusing continuous because it hunts a lot. The only thing good about this one is that when this is set to AFS, it is autofocus single, is that it is on point and it is so quick. All right, moving on now with number three is the IBIS or in-body image stabilization and unfortunately this Panasonic G7 doesn't have that so really IBIS helps especially how huh, when I use this for reaction shots because this one sometimes introduce micro jitters even though I am using a monopod really it's not good when you're viewing it in 4k because you will see it obviously and huh even though you have a gimbal like for me I have used a Xeon Crane version 2 before but still it's not the same as if you have the IBIS built in. In my G9, I have the IBIS on all the time. For me, I don't ever turn off the IBIS while it's on my gimbal, which is the DJI Ronin S. Number four is battery life. And the battery life for this one is not great at all. So I am filming 4K 24p and I only get huh, one hour and 15 minutes. And the drawback would be if the ceremony is uh, kind of long. Let's say the ceremony is Catholic. Sometimes it goes over to one hour. So really you have to watch out for the battery life because if not, you won't be able to capture some shots and you won't have any footage at all. Be mindful of the battery life. It is not great compared to the Panasonic GH5 and the G9 the battery life they are amazing they last for a very long time all right number five unlimited recording which again this one doesn't have it it would be nice if this camera also has an unlimited recording just like the GH5 so you may want to after 30 minutes you have to press the record button one more time to keep filming. All right, that's number five. And now moving on to number six is the usability. Yes, I use this only when it's sitting on a tripod and that's about it. This is great, huh? If let's say uh, you want a talking headshot like this one, this can be a great camera for starters and just pair it with the 14 millimeter pancake lens and you are good to go actually. All right, number seven is the price. This one is about $600 when you want to buy it on Amazon.com and I'm really surprised that this one is still available up to this day. This one, it was announced May 18 of 2015 and come 2021, six years after, it's still available. Wow, mind blown. Maybe a lot of people are still buying this one, right? As their first camera. But I don't recommend this at all if this one will be your first camera and you want to use this handheld as well as for other filming scenarios like let's say vlogging this camera is not it i would recommend instead add 100 more you can get a sony zv1 you will get a better camera in the sense that you can use it for vlogging you can use it as a talking head video camera and that one has an active stabilization built into the lens and it also has the lens already it's a fast lens but it's variable 1.8 to 2.8 aperture and it shoots in 4k as well just like this one so you get more bang for the buck as they say when you get the sony zv1 instead as your first and only camera and maybe down the line if you want a second camera you can get this one as well but you know maybe the price of the sony zv1 you can get another one maybe for a lesser price because this one is actually older now i can only recommend the one that i have and the one that i have experience using 
If you have a collection of micro four thirds lenses in your arsenal, then it's no brainer to get a step up to the G7, which is the Panasonic or the Lumix G85. Why? It shoots 4K as well, like this one. It has IBIS, 5-axis in-body image stabilization, all right? Wow, that's amazing already. It has unlimited recording. Yeah, so adding $100 more, you can get the Panasonic G85 instead of this one. And if you really want a backup camera, then this one comes in because I can only recommend huh, the Panasonic G7 as your second camera or even a third camera and fourth camera in my case. All right, so in conclusion, guys, this Panasonic G7 is still a great camera in 2021, but huh, not as your primary camera because there's a lot of other cameras that can do a lot of things versus this Panasonic G7. All right, that's about it for this review. I hope you find this video helpful. If so, give it a like and don't you forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And while you're at it, click that bell notification icon to be notified with more awesome videos. So until next time, this has been Bernie. Goodbye for now.